Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be setting up the Google Home. This is the personal assistant from Google, very similar to the Amazon Echo, this is just Google's take on it. So this gadget here will allow you to ask at the time of day, what's the weather like, play certain music, listen to radio stations and generally just help you out day to day. Now this is going to be a beginner's guide so it's going to be pretty basic so if you're already used to setting up stuff like this you're probably not going to find the video useful but in it I'm going to go into how to set it up to your Wi-Fi, I'm going to talk about the different types of Wi-Fi, I'm going to tell you how you know which Wi-Fi to connect it to, I'm also going to go into the basics of what's on it, how to change the bottom and then we're going to use the app to get the initial connection done. So this video is going to be about the initial setup and then from there once you've got it working you can then start exploring what it is capable of. So first of all let's have a look inside this. Now this has never been set up before so the setup is going to be live on this video so it might go well, it might go badly, it might be easy, it might be hard. So we've got a lovely box here, nice little magnetic catch there and inside we've got our Google Home, so it's nice and small. Now with this bottom bit here, you can actually replace these to have different colours. So if I have a look here, there's a little leaflet here giving you an idea of the colours that you can get. So for example, if you wanted to, you could change it to have it blend in with the decor of your home. To change it is really easy. All we need to do is firmly grab the bottom and pull it off like that. And that's the inside of it there. Now you will actually see a micro USB there, you don't have to worry about that, we will not have to be connecting into it. We've got a little mic button up here, you could just press this button here and then it's going to cut the microphone so it's not going to be listening to you. Now to change the bottom it's so simple, all you have to do then is go to put it back on and it actually finds its correct place because it's magnetic. So as I start turning that round, it will just fall into place there. Yeah. You can see that's a really nice movement. There we go. Right, it's got a little rubber base, so it's not going to slide around the place. So if it's on a marble or a granite worktop, then it's fine. You can see there, that's not going to move anywhere, so it's not going to be slipping and sliding. Now we've got our power adapter here. So it's nice and straightforward. It just comes with a little cable tie, so we're just going to undo that. So you can move the cable tie to wherever you want it to go. And then you can do a nice bit of cable management and then get rid of all the excess cable into a nice little bundle. So I'm just going to wrap that bit round there because I don't need much and put it through one of the holes there. So that's a nice little touch that they put that in there. Now to put the cable into the bottom, you can't get it wrong, it just fits in and give it a little push and now you can see it's completely flush so it's not hitting the cable at all when it's on this rubber stand. Right, so that's that bit. This is actually the back of it. So the button with the mute, the microphone on, is actually at the back. So you're going to be looking at it this way and it's going to have lights on the top. The top is also touch sensitive as well. And you can do things like the volume and stuff from the top, but we'll go through that later. So when you're looking at it now, the cable and everything's going to be behind. So I'm going to place this, I think, in the corner over here out of the way. And I'm going to plug it in and turn it on. So right now I've got some lights coming on on the top. These must be the little microphones here. We've got some nice pretty colours going round. Welcome to Google Home. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Right, okay, so it looks like you have to have a phone or tablet to be able to do this. Now, in the box, we do have a little quick start guide. So if you have a look here, we've got a little quick start guide. Just telling us some basic features. So we had to plug it in there that we've already done. Then you plug it into a power socket and then we have to download and run the Google Home app on a compatible phone or tablet. And you can do it with iOS, so you can do it with your Apple devices or your Android devices, so you can get it on Google Play or the App Store. Up the top we do have the little microphones here, so these two bits are the microphones that's going to pick up your voice, and it has got far field voice recognition, so it's fully hands-free, so you can talk to this from across the room, or even another room, and it will hear you. 
The other thing that you need to notice is it's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi support. So basically, you're going to have the option, depending on the router you've got, you're going to have the option on what you want to connect it to. If you're right next to your router, so in the UK we call it a router, if you're watching this in other parts of the world, you're going to know it as a router. And basically, it's the box of tricks that the service provider gives you to enable your house to have the internet. But I'll show you that a little bit later. So we've got two signals here, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Basically, the 5 gigahertz channel is normally less congested, so it's normally the better option, but only if your router is going to be near to your Google Home. 5 gigahertz does not travel well, especially when you start going through walls. So I think because you're not going to be actually doing anything too demanding from here, it's probably just as good to put it on the 2.4 gigahertz channel if you've got the choice. And that way then, at least if the router's at the front of the house and this is at the back, you've got a good chance of it working well. Right, so just a few guys here. It says to tap once to stop and pause audio. So if we tap the top once, it will stop and then pause it and then tap it again and it will unpause it. To change the volume, we can just run our hand around in a circle, but we'll try that in a little bit. And to long press, you can start your request. So if you don't want to say the words, OK, Google, then what your you Google can do... Google Home isn't set up yet. So every to time... started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Every time I say that word it's going to say that. And obviously, if you're watching this at home and you've already got your setup, it's going to keep saying it as well. So you might want to hit your the microphone, microphone mute muted. button. So you can see there, I've tapped it now, and the lights have gone to a kind of amber colour, an orange colour. The microphone is back on. Now, instead of saying that word, what we can do is we can just do a long press on the top, and that will also let us do our request. But again, we're going to do that later. So I'm going to get my phone now. Well, I've got my phone. I'm going to go to the Google Play Store, which is this one here. And I'm going to type up here, Google Home. Right, Google Home. And that's the symbol we're looking for, which is the Google colors in the shape of a house. So, tap that. Now, this is free. You don't have to pay anything for this app. And we're going to install it now. You can already see it's been downloaded 50 million times, so very popular. Now, it won't take long to download because it's only going to be small. Right, and now it's done it. We're going to open it. Welcome to the Google Home app. We've got a tap Accept to agree the terms of service. So, Accept. Turn on location permission for setup. The Google Home app requires location permissions to discover and set up nearby devices. So I'm going to turn that on. So I'm going to allow that. This is on an Android phone. The setup is going to be very similar on an iOS and Apple phone as well. So right now it's looking for devices and it says Google Home found. There are just a few steps to set up and personalize your Google Home. So we're going to go to continue. It says now, connecting to your Google Home, your mobile device will switch to a temporary Wi-Fi hotspot on your Google Home. So basically, our Wi-Fi has now been turned off and it's gone over to a hotspot. Let me move this over here more. Successfully connected to your Google Home. This is to confirm that you've connected to the right Google Home. So obviously, it could have connected to your neighbor's one, or if you were in a house share, it could be someone's in a different room. So we're going to play a test sound. We have to confirm it is coming from this. Yep, so I heard that there. So it came from here. So I'm going to say, I heard it. Right now, we've got to decide what room it's in. Well, this is actually the kitchen. I presume a lot of people will be putting it in their kitchen, hence the reason that's the default one there. But if you want to put it in a bedroom or your hallway or something, you just tap that one there and then you can change wherever you want to put it. But for me, I am going to leave it in the kitchen. Send Google Home device usage data and crash reports to Google. Okay, so basically that's just going to help them out if you do that. I'm actually going to uncheck that box, but that's your decision, obviously the more information they get, then they will be able to make their product better in the future. Right, the selected network that has poor signal quality. Try connecting to another Wi-Fi network if available, or move your Google Home closer to your Wi-Fi router. So I'm gonna press OK, got it. Now, I've got a couple of routers in this house, and this is picking up one of them, but it's already told me that the signal's not very good, and you can see there from the bar, that it isn't a great signal. And this will really affect the Google Home. 
If the signal's poor, you're not going to have a good connection to it. So you're going to ask it to play a song and it's going to play it and then it's going to stutter it and then it's going to say internet connection can't be found. So it's really important to put this where it gets a good signal. Even if that means that it's not in an ideal place in the room, if you can't move your router, then I would personally move this closer to it. Or there's other options. You can use things like power line adapters. So if you Google power line adapters, then what that will do is it will bring the internet closer to here. I'm just going to show you one of them. And I'm also going to get a router to show you how you know which one to connect to. Right, okay, so if you don't want to move that nearer to your router and you're getting a poor signal, then look into something like this. There's many different manufacturers out there that make them, so I'm not advising you to get this one, but these are a very popular make. Now, basically, these are very simple to use. What you would do is you're going to plug one in by your router, and then you're going to have a little Ethernet cable from this to your router, and then you're going to plug another one of these into a power supply. So all it's doing is it's taking the Wi-Fi from here and then it's boosting it out from here. So if you had this near your Google Home, then you're going to get a great connection. So here we have the router or router, depending on where you're from, and this is a UK one. What you need to get is you need to get the information from it. So if you look at the back or it might be on the bottom, somewhere on it, it's going to have the SSID and that is basically the name of the router. So that's what you're going to need to connect to. Otherwise, if you connect to somebody else's SSID, you're going to end up trying to connect to your neighbor's router or somebody who lives down the road. You will also need to make a note of your wireless key. It might also be called a password or a passphrase. You need to make a note of that because that's the password that you're going to have to type in to the app to allow you access to the router. Right, okay, so it's saying here, you can get the password for this from my phone, but I don't want to use this one here because the signal's too weak. So I'm going to hit that little down arrow, and then it's going to give, in my instance, other routers. I appreciate in your house, you're only going to have probably the one, in which case then, you're going to have to connect to it. And if it's a weak signal, you're going to have to do something about that by either using power line adapters or moving it closer to your router. But basically, I'm just going to tap that one here, and this is where I've got the option. Remember I said about the 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. So already you can see that the 5 gigahertz signal, this is coming out of the same router, but can you see that the 5 gigahertz signal is less than the 2.4. So for me, I think it's always important to have the best signal possible. So although the 5 gigahertz channel is better and faster, I'm going to go for the 2.4 gigahertz because that's what I want. I don't want it to be any chance of the Google Home not having an internet connection. So I'm going to tap on that one there. So now it says get Wi-Fi password from this mobile device. Well, I can do that because this phone is also connected to this router here as one of the settings. But in your house, your phone might not be connected to your Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to put no thanks. And this is where you would have to enter in the password. So you know that other one, that wireless key or passphrase, that's where you would have to enter it in here. So I'm just going to do this off the camera now. Right, for me now, it says the Wi-Fi networks for your Google Home, this one, and this device, this one, are different. After setup, this device will be connected to that network so you can use your Google Home. So basically, because I'm setting it up, the phone has to be connected to the same network that the Google Home is. So I'm just going to press OK. And now it says setting up your Google Home. Now that last bit there seemed overly complicated. In your house, you've probably just got the one router or router, and in which case then your phone's gonna be connected to that router and your Google Home's gonna be connected to the router, so it's not gonna be as complicated. And here it says, Google Home connected to your Wi-Fi. So we're gonna to go to continue. Meet your Google Assistant. Google Home is powered by the Google Assistant. Ask it questions, tell it to do things. It's your own Google, always ready to help. To get started, connect your Google account for personalized answers and assistance. Right, so this is where you're gonna to have to have an email account, okay? You have got a chance just to leave set up, but I presume then you're not gonna get the full benefits of the Google Home. So I'm just gonna to go to sign in. Well, I'm going to say yes, I'm in, because otherwise I'm not going to have the full functionality. Give family and friends a heads up. Right, so I'm going to go continue. Just got the Google Assistant. Press next. Teach the Assistant to recognize your voice. So I'm saying yes, I'm in. It says here, teach your device to recognize your voice. Say that word. So here we go. OK, Google. Hey, Google. OK, Google. 
Hey Google. It says here, you're ready to go. Your assistant can now recognize your voice when you say that word or that word. Now it's asking me to set the home locations. Now it's asking me, do I want to get email notifications? Well, I don't. You can turn it on there if you want it or leave it off. So I'm going to go to continue. And now it says link your music services, then select a default. So here I've got the option of, remember this is in the UK. So I've got the option of Spotify and Google Play Music. So I'm going to link my Spotify account because that's the one I'm going to be using. It says link your Spotify account. So now I've just got to link the account. And now that's it now. It's come up with a little blue circle next to Spotify. So now we're going to go to continue. And it says update complete. Let's get you using your Google Home. Continue. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. Right, so continue. Okay, Google, how far away is the moon? The moon is 384,400 kilometres from Earth. And what happened there? Because I've also got this word here set up on my phone. It looked like it was about to answer on the phone, but then it defaulted back. Okay, Google, tell me about my day. Hey, Vince. The time is 2.40 p.m. Okay, Google, right stop. Right now in Watford. There we go, okay. So that's how you can stop it as well. Okay, Google, play BBC Radio 1. Okay, here's BBC Radio 1 on the BBC. Okay, Google, turn it down. Okay, Google, turn it up. Okay, Google, stop. Right, okay. So let's go to continue. Okay, Google, what can you do? I can help you do lots of things. For example, you can say, disconnect from Bluetooth. Or, how many species of whales are there? Do you want a couple more ideas? No. Okay, whenever you need help, just ask, what can you do? You can also see more examples in the Google Home app. Right, there we go, it says finish tutorial. So basically, that is just the basics of the Google Home. Let's try this volume thing now. Okay, so that's nice. Sorry, I can't help with that yet. So you can see there, when I bring my finger around, if you have a look at the lights moving around, and you get a little click indication every time you move around another circle. Right, now instead of saying the, uh, the Google word, let's just press down on here for a long press instead. What time is it? The time is 2.43 p.m. Let's lower that down a bit. Okay, Google, what's the weather like in Australia, Sydney? Right now in Sydney it's 13 degrees and clear. Tonight it's forecast to be 22 and clear with some cloudy spells. Okay, Google, play Radio 2. Playing BBC Radio 2 on the BBC. As you know, that of course eventually brought down Richard Nixon. It did, yeah, and if you don't know anything... Okay, so you can see turning the volume down. One of the greatest it's films ever. Back up again. And now if I hit the microphone button at the back, it's quite nice because you don't have to actually look for it. Your fingers can just feel it because it's like an indentation in. So if I hit the that, is muted. I now have that lit up there to say that the microphone's muted. So it's not going to hear me now. Right, and that's what the app's going to look like on your phone. That little home one there. Right, okay, so we don't actually need our phone now because the setup is complete. So let's just put that to one side. And now let's take the mute off the microphone. The microphone is back on. Okay, Google. Play Fur Elise. Sure, Beethoven. Fur Elise by John O'Connor. Here it is on Spotify. So you can see it automatically plays it on Spotify because that's the one I signed into. Okay, and you can turn it down and up and do it from here. And we will be able to adjust the volume via our voice as well. Okay, Google, volume 50%. 
and now we're just going to tap it to resume playing. OK for Google, volume 100%. OK Google, volume 10%. Yeah, so you can see it moving around there. OK, Google, pause. OK, Google, resume. Yeah, and also we can just use our finger to tap it, to pause it, and then tap again to unpause. There we go. OK, Google, stop. OK, Google, tell me a joke. Okay, here you go. A neutron walks into a bar and says, I'd like a beer, please. The bartender gives him one. The neutron asks, how much? And the bartender replies, for you, no charge. Right, okay, so there you see, it's actually very easy to set up. And now, that's just going to live in the corner there. Okay, Google, what's the news? Here's the latest news. At 2.09 p.m. today. Okay, Police Google. Are treating a small Volume 40%. Explosion and fire on a packed underground train go. in West London as a terrorist incident. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set a timer for 10 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds. Obviously, in the, now. in the real world, you'll probably be setting a timer for 45 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on what you're cooking, etc. There we go. OK, Google, stop. And this can really play a good part as well for helping children out with their homework. So years ago, when my daughter asked me maths questions, I could manage it no problem. But now as she's getting older, the questions get more complicated. And sometimes I might help her work something out, but I'm not really sure of the answer. Well, rather than having to keep going over to the computer or getting your phone out or tablet, I can just shout out the question and then I can get the answer to double check that the way I've shown her is correct. So, hey, Google. What's four-fifths times seven-eighths? The answer is 0 0.7. Hey Google, what's an adverb? Adverb, a word, a phrase that modifies the meaning of an adjective, verb, or other adverb, expressing manner, place, time, or degree, e.g. gently, here, now, very. Some adverbs, for example sentence adverbs, can also be used to okay, modify Google, whole stop. sentences. Hey Google. How do you spell astronaut? Astronaut is spelled A-S-T-R-O-N-A-U-T. So as you can see, that's a really useful feature and it does so much more. But in reality, are you going to be getting that to order your Uber cab? Probably not. But I think if you just use it for these things, it's well worth the money. So music is the main thing because anybody in the house can ask it to play music and it doesn't matter what your voice is like, whether you're a four-year-old or an 80-year-old, it's going to understand you. Playing the radio is also another useful one. Helping the children with the homework is really good. And then asking it the weather and asking it the news. So just those five things you'll probably find that you will consistently use onwards. When you first of all get it, you'll be using all the different things and trying this and trying that. But in reality, the novelty of that wears off after a time. But then those five points that I just said are ongoing. And if you're anything like my family, it will get a lot of use when it comes to stuff like that. As well as that, it looks pretty nice. It doesn't take up a huge amount of room, kind of blends in. And the sound quality is pretty good considering the size of it. And also the volume goes loud as well. Obviously, if you're having a party with loads of people in your house, it's not going to be loud enough to fill the house with music. But certainly it will fill the room with music. And then what you can do is you can get other Chromecasts to set things up to your TV and to other equipment as well. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.